My friends, hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Milind. So today in this video, I'm going to give you one uh, checklist and one small uh, few uh, charts about how to assess your GT progression because uh, recently I'm getting a lot of comments and uh, messages from the students who are worried about their uh, GT score that, that they are stuck at certain score and they are not able to improve. So what I'm going to share with you is uh, how can you use this chart and few graphs to assess your progression because GT is something that is causing a lot of anxiety in the minds of students. So definitely uh, effective track and effective usage of uh, this uh, GT should be done. So without wasting any time, and I think this uh, video will be very helpful for all the students who are worried about uh, GT. And I think you can integrate this into your study plan. It will definitely help you. So let's start uh, today's discussion. So how can we, uh, so I'm just giving you a small guide. I have released few videos earlier as well about GT, but still the students are very anxious. So I just want to uh, give you uh, a small piece of advice. So let's see if uh, it, it helps you. So first thing is what my graph of GT should look like. So I have, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, already my opinion that I believe that you should ideally give three to four GTs in a month, not more than that. And GTs are like CRP. CRP is a C-reactive protein. So single value is insignificant. Like in our uh, clinical practice, we use CRP to monitor a progression of a disease or a response to antibiotics. So we don't take a single value. Similarly, GT is a single score. You should not take it. You should not take it in a positive way or a negative way. You have to give multiple GTs and you have to see your trend. So let's say in last uh, two months, like we have been uh, discussing since Jan, uh, January. So if since January, suppose if you are given six, seven GTs, so what your graph should ideally be look like? Let's start first with the red graph. So students who are in the red graph, so they're constantly stuck between 300 to 400 somewhere, and they're not able to improve their score more than that. See, the problem with the students who are here in the red line is uh, because your baseline preparation is not uh, good. I, that means you are notes you have you don't have commands on your uh, notes you don't have command i'll, I'll be discussing this uh, i mean individual uh, groups as per the marks just uh, i want to make a point here that what your graph should look like if your graph is like blue like someday you score 550 someday you score 350 someday you score below 300 someday again you go at 400 and then you come and down. so there are a lot of ups and downs this is also not a ideal graph because if it's your good day, if you're lucky that day that all your exam is good, now you'll definitely get a good rank, good score. But someday if this is where uh, th this kind of question paper you get, then you'll not um, score good. So this blue graph means you have a lot of lacuna. There are a lot of unanswered areas in your preparation. So if your graph looks like this, then definitely you should be uh, work on those weak areas. I will be coming to this part that what exactly you should do. Lastly, what the graph should better be look like, like a green line, that there shouldn't be a lot of fluctuation, that you shouldn't be, your graph shouldn't be moving too much ups and downs. Yes, definitely you'll have some good score, some bad score, but the fluctuation should be like your score should be like plus 50, minus 50, not more than that. If it is more, fluctuating more than that, then definitely it shows that you're, you are not consistent. Your preparation is not on the uh, correct uh, line. Second, you, what you all can do, you can use actually this chart, which I have, which I am showing you. What you do, uh, take a notebook if you have, you write down all the 19 subjects. This one I have already discussed in my previous videos that what should be your target? Like it's not easy. See your, what, what uh, we see that we have to get more accuracy. We have to do the subject wise accuracy. So what you do, as we know, most of you must be using a lot of apps and we are, uh, we get very detailed analysis that in GT, what was your percentage wise score in each subject so that you get. So what you do, suppose for example, I have given these targets and I'm not saying this, these are these are not random numbers. In my previous video, I have shown that if you have, your accuracy is this much in this uh, subjects, definitely you can get score somewhere between 550 to 650, which will fetch you a very good rank and your accuracy can be more than that. Now, for example, these six subjects, which are first and secondary subject, I have given that you require a very high accuracy and this is what actually toppers do because these are very fact-based uh, subject and you can get this higher accuracy only in this subject. So you have to aim for this accuracy in your grant test. Even if you're not getting this much, at least be close to these numbers. In pediatrics and uh, ophthalmology, NT 7 to 75 is acceptable in uh, big four, like medicine surgery. They are always changing. There are a lot of clinical scenarios which might have a confusing answers. So definitely our target should be at least 60 to 70% in this big four and short subject again, uh, being a database, you should target somewhere 70 to 80%. So this is what should be your goal. And we have to set our goal higher than only we will reach. Let's say you have written your GT score and your accuracy. So you can use a highlighter like yellow highlighter to highlight 
that where you were not able to achieve your uh, target. For example, I wrote my first GT in uh, January and then I saw that all my rank building subject were weak. My ophthalmology was weak. My medicine was weak and radio, psychiatry, ortho and anesthesia. So these are the subjects which I highlighted yellow and then I realized, okay, these are the things which I need to work on. So before giving GT2, I started working more on my rank building subject. So I was able to overcome and uh, achieve my target in case of pharmacology and microbiology. But still this, but still there was certain improvement in other subject as well. As you can see, compared to the previous time, I did better. Now, this is just an imaginary scenario. Now, pediatrics, my score was 70% and now its score is 45%. ENT, my score was 70% and now my score is 72%. So what it shows, so as I showed you in the previous graph, so here my 70% in pediatrics was by chance. So my score again dipped down, but my ENT is strong. So even if no matter how the question paper come, my ENT score will be good. Like it will fluctuating between the range of 70 to 80. So this is what should be your target. Not like this, that once you get a very good score and once you dip down. And similarly, then I improved in subject. And again, GT3, again, I realized, okay, my rank building subjects are very good. So what I did next three weeks, I just attributed to the rank building subject. I mean, I gave the major time to that because I need to get a, achieve a higher accuracy. So maybe in physiology, I was not able to reach my target, but still 78% is good enough. And maybe pathology, I see, it seems easy for me. Pharmacology, I, I was consistent what I achieved in the past and similarly for the microbiology. So whenever you are assessing a GT, so you have to do on the subject basis because you have to try it. Say, ophthalmology, it's tough. It's very easy to get that uh, higher accuracy. And even especially for INSAT, it's very difficult to get uh, specifically this kind of results. If you have medicine, surgery, PSM, oxygen, image, don't try like 80 and 90% of accuracy. That is not going to happen. So this should be your target. And I have said in a video that you don't have to do it. अगर आपका ये एक्यूरेसी आएगा ना विच आई हैव गिवन इन जीटी 3 अगर आपका ये एक्यूरेसी में आप क्लोज करते हो आई एम नॉट सेइंग कि आपका इतना ही आए बट दिस इज व्हाट एक्चुअली टॉपर्स डू जो अभी नीट पीजी 2021 हुआ था उसमें जो रैंक 1 था ही स्कोर वाज नियरली 720 ही स्कोर वाज 720 और समथिंग एंड ही गॉट जो मैंने एनालिसिस में बताया था ही गॉट नियरली 182 क्वेश्चंस राइट सो आउट ऑफ 200 इज एक्यूरेसी इज 182 क्वेश्चंस ही इज गेटिंग राइट तो हम भी ये कर सकते हैं ना वी कैन डू बेटर लाइक विद दिस परसेंटेज यू कैन गेट अराउंड 145 टू 155 क्वेश्चंस राइट दैट विल गिव यू सम वे स्कोर बिटवीन 550 टू 600 आई एम टेलिंग अबाउट जीटी नाउ व्हाट आई एम सेइंग दैट इन जीटी ना यू विल ऑलवेज गेट अ लेसर स्कोर जीटी में आपका स्कोर हमेशा कम होगा क्योंकि जीटीज आर यूजुअली टफर देन रियल एग्जाम दो स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव रिटन ऑलरेडी नीट 2021 दे विल रियलाइज कि जीटी जो हम देते हैं ना वो ज्यादा टफ होते हैं उसमें क्वेश्चन ज्यादा डिफिकल्ट होते हैं rather than your actual exam exam the problem is we do a lot of silly mistakes and that is what actually hurt us so what you do you make this chart and you share all your gt score aapka jo gt score hai wo subject wise aap likho you don't have to go in detail you just have to see that what are your actual weak areas and you have to start working on that and especially for this subject you have to aim higher accuracy as i said now let's say if your problem your uh, score is less than 300 so problem with your preparation is you are you are weak in rank building and mentoring subject so as your rank building subjects are weak you are not able to build your wrong also whatever notes you are reading you have a very poor yield from whatever you are reading so you have to read your notes you don't have to run see there is no secret to success aap kiske piche bhag ke nahi puch sakte ki main kaise gt score improve karu main kya karu without doing it you are not going to do it you got to do a lot of hard work because we have like hamare paas 2 and half months ka time hai but you have to need to stick to your notes you have to do a lot of hard work but you have to read your notes again and again until and unless you read your notes your score is not going to improve and especially for the rank building subject those who are between 300 to 400 see you are also i, mean, I will not say that you are in a uh, good uh, school, uh, zone you are also in a very volatile zone but the thing for your uh, rank is also similarly poor rank building subject because I have said in my analysis mein bhi kaha tha pehle, ke to get into top 20,000 20, rank that you should have a four, above 450-500 score so you should have a good command on your rank building subject then only you are going to get into those ranks also you have not you have problem with your revisions unless and until you are going to make your revisions better you are not going to improve your rank so again for the same this group also i will say ke aap apne rank building subject pe concentrate karo. spend more time on your rank building subject you have to initiate revisions you have to plan better revisions then only you can uh, go ahead those who are between 400 to 500 i think this is this group uh, stands a very good chance if you think that your rank is between 400 to 500 i mean your score at this stage i think you stand a very uh, good chance and your study methods are good don't be disheartened 
or the thing is uh, you are very poor in rank maintaining subject which are basically short subject and also you are doing a lot of silly mistakes that is the reason you are not your score is not improving so how to avoid silly mistakes so for uh, rank maintaining subjects jo sabse best tarika hai ek to aapne notes kar liye do last five years mcqs because what happens like for example subject like psychiatry they are not going to there are not new questions they are introduced in radiology derma similar questions are again and again asked so what you can do you can do last five years of neat pg uh, aims gpmr and nicd question papers you can do that will definitely help you in improving these ranks so you have to concentrate on this particular part then students who are above 500 or you will ask me sir why you have not included students above 600 i don't think even a uh, lot of students are there who are consistently uh, scoring above 600 and even if they are who are doing this definitely they are working more on uh, improving that score better than that so i have just included till 500 so those who are at 500 again you are also doing lot of silly mistakes and you are doing mistakes in a volatile topics so i'll say to also concentrate on pyqs also do a lot of charts lot of mnemonics of volatile topics and for you the consistency will be key because don't be happy that you are scoring 500 see what i'm uh, i have quoted here is not a single gt score ye jo maine likha hai na ye average gt score hai ki aapka average gt score kya tha so definitely as per your group you work on those areas and one thing i'll tell you the only thing to improve your score is to read your notes now a lot of students say ki sir will solve solving more mcqs or qbong will improve my gt score so i will like to answer this question with the help of a small example suppose this is a water tank or let's say this is a, a well or a water tank now there is not enough water in your water tank so basically this water tank represent your brain and this water represent the uh, the me- memory and the knowledge you have about the subject now if there is no water in your tank if there is no information about the subject in your tank no matter how many times you are going to throw the bucket aap kitne bhi bar wo tanki mein aap aapki balti dalo you will not get water you will not get results similarly if you don't have knowledge if you don't have proper command on your theory no matter how many times you are going to solve mcqs your mcq solving skills your mcqs are not going to get right sometimes what might happen see the tank is never empty there might be some water uh, left somewhere so sometimes you're you're lucky you can get that water in your bucket so you feel like okay maybe i got this question right you will be happy but that's not the case it just you by chance you got it right so solving more questions qbong pq bank is not going to improve your gt score what you have to do is you have to fill this tank with water then your chances of getting bucket filled with water will improve and this represent that you have to read your notes again and again aapke notes pe aap command lo you have to aise notes pe uh, read your notes in such a way that you remember each and every line from your uh, notes so one thing i want to tell you that remember you have to peak at the right time see it's not like as i say always say that pg exam is not a 100 meter journey it's a marathon so suppose we are here in the somewhere in the here starting in the month of march so from november december you started and this is gt score this graph is represent a gt score over the time so you have to peak in april and may it's not like ki aapne december mein hi 600 ka score achieve kar liya then you cannot sustain this peak you have to peak at the right time so even if you are not getting good scores here remember you are in a uh right track you are just going to take that acceleration very soon so you have to peak at the right time don't forget that so i just want to uh, summarize uh, whatever i told you so assess your trend of progress so make this chart and see how much you are progressing write the total score in the end and this will not take much time so definitely you can do to assess your trend you chart to see subject wise improvement which i already showed work on your weak areas don't then don't run behind mcqs see which are subject like if your rank building subjects are poor spend more time on that don't i'm i'm telling you giving more and more gts is not going to improve your score it just give you the false hope and lastly you know as this is my personal opinion what i say what i'm saying in the last uh, line that success in neat pg is 30% brain and 20% consistency maybe a lot of students will not agree with me but what i'm what i mean here is you don't have to use your brain a lot in your uh, neat pg exam because you have to be consistent you have to read again and again you have to be determined and you have to show that consistency in your uh, preparation and then only you will remember more and you will produce a better result maybe in nicet you will you require more of your uh, uh, thought process or your cort- cortical uh, function maybe but what i am trying to make a point here that being a consistent in this exam is the key so that's all guys i want to say so don't take much tension about your gt score 
assess your weak areas and work on the, them and make your graph look like this green graph that it is like you get a constant uh, good score so guys i wish you all the best and i hope uh, this helps you and uh, you integrate this into your uh, preparation if you still have any doubt let me know in the comment section take care